people love going to the gym and doing the same exercises over and over and over. We're gonna give you 10 of the hardest exercises that you can do, and we're gonna start right now. Exercise one. This is a movement that's gonna target your abs and your entire posterior chain. It's gonna strengthen your glutes and your stability, and that is the front loaded single leg squat. So we're gonna use our ZKC bar. We've got our single leg pad here, our balance pad, and now we're gonna front load this, okay? Oh, gonna get set, come down, boom, 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 boom. Nice and stable, switch legs. You can do four sets of four to six reps on each side. Target those abs and that posterior chain to get swole. Front loaded single leg squats, exercise one. That second key exercise is gonna be an awesome movement for general fitness if you're just trying to tone up those shoulders, get a little bit swole, and for athletes that want to get stronger. And that movement is going to be an alternating dumbbell press. So what we wanna do is we're gonna get set and we're gonna hold the dumbbells on our shoulders. And you can see this in our app peak strength. You can watch an NCAA champion demonstrate here, holding tight and pressing. And the main focus is that we want to feel our abs being stable. Our abs are our foundation as we press, okay? And then we wanna have that nice, long time under tension to really strengthen those shoulders and improve that overall stability. This is a great exercise to strengthen that upper body. I would do five sets at nine on each side. That's a great rep scheme if you wanna get swole and get fit. So one of the best ab exercises that you can do is a walrus. And people have asked us questions about that inside of our other videos, but we've never really offered an alternative. And today, because most gyms today, even at Gold's and a lot of Planet Fitnesses, they're still gonna have a rower. So if you're someone who's training for general fitness, you're still gonna have access to a rower. Now, this is where we're gonna use the rower to train your abs. We're gonna look for almost an active plank, okay? So we wanna get our feet set on the chair right here, and we're gonna walk backwards, okay? We're gonna get our hands right here, and then we're gonna walk forwards. And we wanna keep pressing our belly button up, and then we're gonna walk backwards, okay? And then we we'll walk forward. So this is a walking rower plank. Now, the main goal is that you can set a timer. You can do four minutes on this thing. You could go four one minute periods. That's gonna help with that stability. It's also gonna help with your shoulder stability, which in turn will lead to better joint integrity, all while training your abs. Exercise four, we're gonna go with the deadlift. Now, there's a couple key factors. I prefer to deadlift without my shoes on. I don't like having my heels drive into that squishy sole. The other aspect behind having my shoes off is that it gives me a little bit better proprioception when I'm pulling. We wanna do this with really good technique. What that means is that we might have a slightly wider stance here, wider than shoulder width apart. We wanna set our back, and our back can be slightly rounded, okay? Watch the best deadlifters in the world, they have a slightly rounded back. And I'm not saying here, just a little bit rounded. If you don't wanna round your back, you can keep that arched and keep it very rigid, but that's the whole point here is that no matter how you start, that's where you need to set it. So for me, I'm gonna get set here. I'm gonna have just a slight round in my upper back, very, very slight, but I wanna set it here. And I like to think about falling backwards with good technique, okay, here, pick up, back, okay? Back. Boom. Okay. High reps can be extremely challenging. I recommend if you're trying to be fit, you're trying to improve your overall fitness, do sets of eight to 12 reps. Do that on a minute to a minute and a half rest. If you're someone that wants to pull 705 pounds, when I pulled 705, the whole focus was doing singles to triples. So it depends on whatever your goal is gonna be. That's where you gotta focus on that rep scheme. So this is another exercise you've probably never done. And I want you to start off easy. So if you're in general fitness, Start with dumbbells, don't go crazy, but if you're an athlete, you can start with a barbell. Keep that load a little bit lighter. I like to put my knees on our garage strength balance pad. This foam pad is super dense, so it protects your knees. It's really simple. Now, if we have a squat rack, we would take this out of the squat rack. I'm gonna be a meathead and do a little bit of a hip power clean. If you wanna use dumbbells, again, you can go right up to a dumbbell rack. This is a movement that's gonna target your hips 
and your abs and your upper body together. So it's actually a total body exercise that is very complicated, but transfers really well to other exercises. So I'm here, boom, okay. So I'm gonna come back, drive. Come back on my heels, drive. Back on my heels, drive. Now, the main focus is that as I come back and I drive, I wanna squeeze in my abs, I wanna squeeze in my glutes together, okay? So our hips, abs, everything works together as we put that force into the barbell. The Pennsylvania Barbell Press, AKA the PA Press. And you can do four or five sets for five to seven reps. It's really gonna help strengthen those shoulders, improve your core, and also enhance your hips. So this is probably the hardest hamstring exercise on the entire planet. And I would recommend starting this banded. I also think that you could just warm up with something simple like this, okay? And this is gonna be the Nordic hamstring pull. So this would be an easy way to target those glutes and hamstrings together, wake them up, and then as you start to warm up, you can get into that Nordic, where we're gonna go through a slow eccentric, and this is why we wanna keep that rep scheme a little bit lower, maybe five, six sets, but we do four to seven reps, so a little bit on the lower end of the rep schemes. And again, this is a movement that's very, very challenging. So if you're into just general fitness, try to RX this so it's a little bit easier. You could have a bench that you raise up, that makes it a little bit simpler. You could even do slow eccentric leg curls. But what we're gonna focus on here, we're gonna come down nice and controlled, touch your chest, and pull from those hamstrings on the way back up. Now you can see I bend a little bit in my hips. Ideally, I wanna keep those hips forward. And as you get stronger and stronger, you can start to increase the speed on the way up, and that's gonna make your hamstrings extremely strong. Okay, so this next exercise is going to be a great movement to target and almost totally isolate your abs, okay? You're gonna have a little bit of the hip flexion in there, but what we wanna focus on is pushing our belly button down through our lumbar spine into the bench. And this movement is called the ironclad abs from one of my close friends, Jason Kusick, who basically created this exercise to help strengthen his lower back and abs. And that's why this is such a functional exercise for everybody. Athletes and general fitness will benefit tremendously throughout their core when they execute this. So the main focus here is again, we wanna focus on pushing our abs down into our bench, come out, bring them down, push that lower back down, push that lower back down, come up. Push that lower back down, push that lower back down, come back up, okay? So even right here, that lower back is flat against the bench. Hold on to the top of the bench with your hands. You can do three sets of 12 to 17 reps and your abs will be sore for two to three days easily. Okay, so this eighth exercise is extremely challenging. And if you wait a little bit, I'm gonna give you a couple alternatives that you can do. But if you're someone who can do pull-ups, if you can bang out some pull-ups, this movement is gonna target your lats and your abs together. And I like to do it with a neutral grip. The neutral grip can be a little bit easier on my shoulders, a little bit even easier on my biceps while still lighting up my forearms. And this is gonna be a neutral grip pull-up with a plate on my feet. Yo, Mason. Mason just looks super disheveled. Here he comes, CEO of Garage Strength Equipment. Walks in the door. I feel triggered. Who's dumber? Me being in that position or him giving me that? <laughs> so we're gonna put the plate on our toes, okay? We're gonna hold that here, and now I basically have a hollow position. So I wanna do a pull up, come down nice and controlled, come back up, hold that hollow position, back up. Give me two more. One more. Now, if you're somebody who can't do pull-ups, okay, you can't do pull-ups at all, what you can do to mimic this movement is you can do a neutral grip lat pull-down or even a seated row. And you can bust out 17 to 20 reps, squeezing on that eccentric, and then after that, rest about 20 seconds, and then you can do a V up or a pass the plate another type of core exercise that sort of pairs that together. And what will end up happening is as you get back into that lat pull down, you're gonna really start to feel those abs. The next day, your lats and your abs are gonna be nice and sore, and that's gonna help you as you make that progress. 
Exercise nine. This is a movement that anyone can do. You could do this at home. I've had people hit me up. They go, Dane, you know, we got into peak strength. We got that free first week of training. Make sure you pick up that free first week of training at peakstrength.app because if you don't pick it up, then you're not gonna improve at all. At least if you pick that first free week up, you're doing something to improve. I don't have the time to work out. And what they can end up doing is that you could spend 10 minutes just doing this movement, the praying mantis lunge into jump lunges. And so what I wanna do is I wanna get set at about 90 degrees, okay? And I don't want to extend at all. I wanna stay nice and low here. I'll come towards the camera and then I'll go backwards. And I wanna do this for about 10 reps on each leg, holding this nice deep position, okay? So I'm here, I'll go one more time forward, okay? And then I'm gonna give you a little trick here is that as you get backwards to this point, if I can do this, if you can't do this, you can do normal lunges or you can do single leg squats, anything else to fatigue you more if you can't do this movement. If you're an athlete or somebody who can do this, now you do that praying mantis lunge where you do nine reps on each leg and then you do five jump lunges on each leg, focusing on that stability, hit and go, ah, making you breathe heavy like me and lighten up your glutes and your hamstrings. So praying mantis lunge, holding that deep position, Forward, backward, forward, backward, into jump lunges. If you're short on time and you didn't pick up that free week of peak strength training, you can do this for 10 straight minutes and your legs and lungs will be smoked. Ooh. Exercise 10. This is gonna be a movement that you probably have never done and it's an exercise that's easier on your knees. It's gonna target your abs. It's gonna strengthen your mobility and your back all in one. This movement is absolutely phenomenal, but you might not wanna do it because it's really challenging, and that is a zombie squat. So we're gonna demonstrate what that is to a T right now. The whole goal is that when we're doing a zombie squat, we wanna reach full range of motion, we wanna make sure our heels are stable, driving through the floor, and that our trunk is upright. So when we get set, okay, we wanna get in this front rack position. That means it's gonna be slightly easier on our knees. It's gonna help us be upright here. It's gonna mobilize our lower back and our hips. So that's gonna to lead to better strength, which in turn in everyday life, you're gonna be able to operate a little bit more efficiently. So I'm gonna be here, take this out of the rack. My arms will be out, but I'm holding my mic with my left arm. Descend slowly and then come up. Two more. I can feel my abs already. And so what happens is that to keep that bar from rolling off my shoulders, I have to squeeze through my abs and in my back together, and that leads to that dynamic trunk control. I'd recommend doing four to five sets for four to seven reps. That can be really challenging. Start light and slowly build into this. Strength training isn't easy. These movements are really, really challenging, but they all serve a purpose. But be smart, make sure that you progress slowly and you start a little bit easier. Now, if you're an athlete and you understand what these movements do, that might lead to better strength and in turn, better athleticism. If you're here for general fitness, what you wanna do is slowly build into it and learn the movements as effectively as possible before you start to add more weight. And if you wanna build strength and get more athletic, make sure you check out our brand new app, Peak Strength. When you head over to peakstrength.app, you can pick up an app for 35 different sports, and it's gonna be a fully personalized program specific to your PRs and what your goals are in training. And that first week is free. So head over to peakstrength.app or the Google Play Store or even the Apple Store. And remember, you can also check out our other YouTube channel, Peak Strength. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.